This brown thing over here is an elevator for a wheelchair. Got this project going on, putting in a sidewalk over here, 65 feet from here, the driveway to the patio over there. There's a sliding door coming off a three season porch that's never had any stairs. That's where the elevator's gonna go. Gonna hand mix this stuff tomorrow. I've got sand and gravel. And what I've determined is that uh, I took a flat shovel there and picked up the largest scoop possible because that's obviously what I'm gonna wanna do. And it takes four scoops to fill that five gallon pail. I'm going to be putting it in the bobcat bucket <clears throat> and um, doing the formula one, two, three. So basically one part Portland cement and two parts sand and three parts gravel. And I was got this little portable mixer or this little electric mixer, but I don't plan on using that. Um, so basically this is all, this is all tamped down the forms that I'm using. They were just these old boxes that uh, my wife's company throws away and I took them apart. It's only three quarter inch wood, but uh, um, it's gonna be good enough. So I've got my crushed stone over here, all tamped down. I actually ex excavated all the old grass out of here and dug it down. I'm not sure, I was gonna put a, a vegetable garden there, but it's uh, uh, too many trees. And I realized afterwards that uh, the tree line, it, it doesn't get enough sun over here. But I need the, uh, I need the uh, the elevator because, as you can see, we've got handicap. Um, I got a, a mother-in-law that's in a wheelchair, and the father-in-law will probably be in a wheelchair before you know it. So we care for some elderly people, and this is not going to hurt the property anyhow. So anyway, I'm going to give an update on this as I go along. I'm going to keep going with the video, and uh, we'll see how this uh, whole hand mixing process goes. Well, sometimes things don't go as good as one would hope. And maybe my measurements were off just a little bit. Um, I was assuming I had about three inches, but I'm sure there's probably more, probably more like three and a half in some areas and five in some areas and four. Anyway, um, I was I thought I was gonna use about a yard and a half and ended, ended up or two yards. And uh, yesterday I mixed nine bags of Portland and um, I wasn't gonna have enough to finish so I stopped and I'm calculating I need about seven bags more and I'm gonna go ahead and get this going today so I stopped right there anyhow um, you know I poured this all mixed this all by hand and uh, poured it and finished it so this is where we're at and uh, gonna go ahead and keep going here today and get this done Okay, so I've already determined that four of these scoops, totally full, as big as I can pick it up, is equal to one bucket, according to one pail. According to the internet, one five gallon pail is 0.67 cubic feet. So that's three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven, twelve. So I'm using twelve sand, one bag of Portland, and eighteen scoops of gravel. I'm sure there's people that might think like, 
well why don't you just mix your sand and your gravel first and this and that and hey you know i don't have all the answers i'm just trying to do a sidewalk here and i'm one guy yesterday i mixed a, a yard and a half and today i'm going to mix another yard or so and one of these buckets is about a sixth of a yard so according to mike haddock who seems to be a god on the internet with uh, masonry he suggests you always mix your sand and your portland dry first okay and i did get from him some questions in regard because i watched a video of him and he mixed cement and then he said if you want concrete just throw in some stone and he threw in some stone after the concrete or after the cement was already mixed that's the avenue i'm going i'm mixing the uh the uh, concrete or the cement, Portland cement, and the sand dry first, just giving it a little bit of a turnover. And as you can see, the method I'm kind of like using the front edge of this bucket as a fulcrum and then just pivoting the shovel. So it's not like I have to pick up every hand, every um, uh, what do you want to call it, shovel full. It's not like it's all muscle. I do have a hoe also. And I use the hoe some. And also, if you look over there, there's that black thing. That's a cement mixer. That I bought from my neighbor. I have another one at a different location, but I don't have it here. And the reality is, is that I think I can do a faster job by just doing this by hand. Understand once again that this one bucket is equivalent to um, one sixth of a yard. So we're getting quite a bit of, of mix from this, uh, from this uh, scenario. Now another thing is that obviously it's easier to mix cement when, you have, when it's a little wetter. And one thing that's to note is yesterday morning when I started this project, the sand was wet or wetter because it had rained the night before. Well, I noticed during the day yesterday that the sand, I needed more water. Now, even if you're going to go with buckets, which you see I'm doing, I've got five gallons. I had to adjust my, my ratio yesterday a little bit because um, it was drier later in the day. Because obviously the sand and my aggregate is drying out a little bit. But the beautiful part about this is that you can go ahead and add a little extra water and get your sand and your in your Portland mixed really pretty decently and with, with more ease because you're not concerned about having it so dry. Because when we're done here. We're going to drive over to the aggregate pile and we're going to add 18 shovelfuls of, uh, of aggregate. So that's going to suck up a little bit of the moisture. So having it a little bit wetter at this stage of the game is okay. And if you think about it, what does a concrete mixer do? It comes over and it just keeps turning over the material. Well, that's what I'm doing right here with the shovel. Okay, and I'm just, like I say, using the the edge of the bucket on the handle of the shovel to just turn it. And then every once in a while I'm just doing one of these things. And I understand this is hard work. And the reality is that why would a person even do this? Okay? Why would a person even pour their own sidewalk? Why not hire somebody? Well obviously they pour their own sidewalk because they want to save money. Well if you want to save money, well then gosh darn it you should mix your own cement too, or concrete. The reality is, is that I thought I needed two yards, and I was thinking it was about 60 feet. Well, really it's 66 feet, 
And if I were to order two yards, they were gonna charge $700, $350 per yard, okay? That was the cheapest price I could get. And the reality is, is that I would have been short. Okay, now I ordered all this sand and gravel. Number one, I had to excavate my area and I needed gravel to put under the sidewalk. So if I, and, and I ordered a truckload, I ordered 20 ton gravel and 10 ton sand. I have more projects to do here besides this one, this one sidewalk. So I'm going to use this stuff and I paid like less than $600, let's say 550 bucks for my, for my sand and my gravel. And uh, the deal is, is that, uh, is that, uh, and then I paid like a hundred and two, the, the Portland is thirteen dollars and twenty-eight cents a bag, and I have used about four bags. I used nine yesterday, and I figured that I need six or seven more. Okay, so I wasn't going to have enough Portland yesterday. That's the reason I didn't finish this. Plus, I was pretty wiped out. And I can also say, if you start this project, you might have a. I I I, I would think you want to do that. The turtle hair scenario. I mean, obviously, your first bucket, you're going to probably mix faster than your last bucket. But, getting back to water, we want to make sure we have enough water. Go ahead and throw it in. We're going to use more than this five gallons. So why struggle to mix in the sand and, and cement? Might as well mix it easier by having the water because we're going to use it. We'll see the mix in the end is going to come out good. So let's get back to uh, a person doing this job. Why does a person, if, you, if you're not worried about money, well then gosh darn it, just hire a contractor to come out and do your job start to finish and sit in your lawn chair, sipping your martini or your New England iced tea or whatever the heck your drink of preference is and watch the guy and maybe criticize him. Or you can watch the video and criticize me, that's fine, either way. But uh, bottom line is that if I, I would have been short on concrete yesterday had I only gotten two yards. Harbor Freight shovel. <laughs> this little end keeps falling off. I had to tape the, the grip because the grip is, uh, but you know what, for 10 bucks. Anyway, um, so if I would have gotten three yards of concrete, it would have cost me over a thousand dollars. Plus I would have needed to, to buy gravel and put a base down. Okay. And I've got 550 bucks. Let's see, even call it 600. Plus I have 250 for Portland and the Portland, I have extra bags. Probably gonna have an extra three or four bags. So let's say I have 200 in Portland and I have, um, well, you can do the math on that. Let's say I use sixteen dollars for four dollars and twenty-eight cents plus tax or whatever. I don't know. I don't. I'm not trying to think the numbers exactly. But that's what I got for Portland, or that's what I think I'm going to have. If you put all of the aggregates and, and uh, materials and, 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 and gravel into this job, okay, what are we going to have? We're going to have like less than a thousand dollars. Well, on my calculation, if you look at that pile of sand over there, and you'll see the aggregate of the pile of crushed sand over there, you'll realize that it's, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, it's labor intensive, but I'm probably saving 400 bucks a day, or making 400 bucks a day. You could even figure more than that, because if I had to have a job, okay, I'd be having to make 600 to be able to pay somebody 400. So, reality is that, uh, that if you're going to do the job, and it's because you want to save money, well, I don't understand how paying somebody to drop off a couple of yards is really a good idea. And understand, I'm not I'm one guy, okay? I'm doing the floating, I'm cutting the seams, I'm doing the streeting, the whole ball of wax. So, and I understand this, like you say, this is probably, I'm guessing it probably takes 20 minutes to mix this. Okay, even if it took a half hour. Okay, 
So if you, even 45 minutes, 45 minutes, two, two of these buckets is going to be an hour and a half. Okay. So what? Six buckets would be six hours. And that's the counting the street, street time and everything. So when you add all that stuff together, it's uh, really not that much work. Now I know I'm going to need a little bit more water only because I've been doing this. So there you have it. That's the amount of water I'm going to use. And that's the beautiful thing about mixing your sand and Portland first is you can mix it a little bit wetter. And then the stone turns in, but you know your you know that your cement is mixed with the sand and water. I mean, you know, it may not be one thousand percent, but it certainly is uh isn't too bad. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this little bit because you got the idea of this and when we get to the gravel pile, we'll start up again. So what I'm going to do is put in six and give it a little mix and then six more. Once again, I get as much on the shovel as I can. I'm going to just go ahead and start a little, little ways away from the corner there so that I can mix into that spot. And I'm sure, you know, people might criticize and say, why, like I said, why didn't you mix the gravel first with the sand and... You know, I, hey, it's not that big of a deal. And I just want to get this job done. One, two, three, four. Five. Six. Okay. So then the same thing. I just come over here and give it a turn. idea here I put I'm putting in mixing in these six so I'm gonna do six more and we'll come back on the last 18 and on, on the last six scoops so um, we'll be back in a minute all right so obviously you want to put in the amount of water you feel comfortable with the right amount but one thing you want to consider whenever you're here about mixing concrete you hear this one two three one part Portland two parts sand three parts aggregate well, that works fine, but when you go to do your calculation for how much concrete you need, you have to understand that you're probably adding also one part of water. 
So that's an important thing to understand because you're taking a whole pail of water or more and mixing it in with those other pails. So that actually takes up volume. All right, so I'm gonna go over, we're gonna dump this in a minute here and I'm gonna just show you how I screwed it out and we're gonna go from there. But I think it's pretty good consistency. Generally, there's a little bit up in the, in the back edge over there that's a little bit dry, but that's gonna be just a push into the cement when I, or the concrete when I'm over there ready to put uh, in the form. So here we go, we're gonna go over to the form. You know, I'm pretty happy having any kind of an excavator or backhoe, or not backhoe, but bobcat or bucket or whatever you want to call it, front end loader. I mean, that might be, you know, it was uh, something that was pretty affordable. I have another one that, uh, that was a newer one that was supposedly better, but I had trouble with the electronics. And gosh, I got five inches of soil out from this whole area over here. I graded the whole this whole end and having something like this to be able to uh, to be able to uh, move some stuff around certainly makes a big difference. I mean even if you just have something like a like a, uh, a tractor with a front end loader or something like that. Um, obviously the bobcat is much more driver friendly because you're not shifting gears and pushing any clutches and everything. And uh, if you get something that's a little bit older that doesn't have all those, uh, all those electronics on it and you're able to keep it running, if you have any kind of mechanical ability, well, that makes it pretty nice. <clears throat> I had a problem with one of the drives on that and it wasn't working, it was screaming and making all kinds of noise. And what I ended up doing was uh, I switched the hoses off the pump and determined that it was not the, the hydraulic motor, but 
rather the uh, but rather the uh, 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 hydraulic pump because when I switched the hoses around I was able to realize that the problem moved to the other mo to the other hydraulic motor so it wasn't a problem with my drive motor it was a problem with my with my pump and I took the pump apart knowing nothing about them and there really wasn't even anything on YouTube and I did put a YouTube about that but um, for 400 bucks they call it a rotating group it's a cylinder with about eight or twelve pistons I don't remember inside and basically those uh there was one that was bad and that was 400 with delivery of the part and everything and it, you know it's an afternoon's job so and it might not be the best for bobcat in the world but i'll tell you what it certainly beats a shovel and a wheelbarrow All this gravel was tamped down already. The reason for all these rocks, these forms I think I've already mentioned, those are just three quarter board. And the problem I have is that this soil has so many rocks in it. I tried driving stakes in and everything I tried, I tried uh, conduit, I tried multiple things and nothing seemed to work and so I thought geez I pulled all these rocks out when I graded I just line I just I for a line I drove in a piece of conduit up there and a piece of conduit here I drew, strung a line then I I had these already and I just laid those down on the line and then I put the three-quarter board up to it and figured out whatever way I could do to support it and I mean, this is just a, a sidewalk, a walkway. This is not some commercial heavy duty thing for forklifts and all kinds of heavy traffic. So for my purposes, this thing is gonna be beautiful. So basically, this is one guy pouring three yards, mixing it by himself. And obviously, what happens here. So I'm screeding this. This is the last load. Here's where I ended yesterday. Okay. I'm letting that sit for a minute. Then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to cut a joint and I'm going to hit the edges to push those stones down. But, uh, and obviously if you know, if you're doing any sidewalk work, you know, you know the tools and this is pretty much basic stuff. You just get up along your form and you just run it along your form over here and you're just getting the rocks away from the edge. You saw me a few minutes ago tap it with the hammer. That's to get any air bubbles out. And uh, you probably want to do this a couple times. And you know, I don't care. I'm not trying to win any beauty contest here. I'm looking for a functional sidewalk that's gonna work. And obviously if you do it when it's too wet, you're gonna get too big a depression. So you want to wait a little bit. You see how there's a lot less over here than there is down here? It's too wet for that. But if you wait too long, your stones aren't going to get out of the way. So it's really not even a bad idea to do it first, even when it's wet like this, because then you get the stones out of the way and everything else that's left, because if you screen it again, you'll fill it. And then if you come back again later, you won't have those heavy stones in the way that are gonna mess it up when you try to come back and do it again. So getting that now is probably not such a bad idea. And as I mentioned, I'm not really too concerned if the edge is down a little bit or this or that, I don't really care. The sidewalk, in my opinion, is pretty nice. Not a bad idea to keep your tools clean either. So, Maybe come back here, screen it again. Always a good idea to have a little bit of material in front of your board.
it's not such a bad deal anyway. It gives a little break between mixing, you know? But don't get me wrong, I was pretty wiped out yesterday. I did nine buckets and I figure I need six or seven. You see what I got left? This is two buckets. There to here is two buckets. And I gotta do over to there, so maybe five more. But certainly it's doable. And you know, if you're gonna do it, I'm not saying I'm going for perfection, but gosh darn it. If you're gonna take the time to do something, you know, you might as well try to do it decently. I mean, there's gonna be flaws anyway, so if you're seeing a problem, you might as well try to fix it when you can. Take that extra second. Why do a job like this and then, and then not, you know, try to make it good? I mean, there's already probably gonna be people saying, what a terrible job I did and I don't know what I'm doing. And that's probably true. I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, I'm no Mason, but I believe that when it's all said and done, especially if you put a couple of years on it, people aren't gonna come over here and say, oh, whoa, what a shitty sidewalk that is. You know? I mean, it doesn't work that way. I mean, if you want a sidewalk, you gotta be, you know, you should be happy with what you get, you know, or do a nice job. So, well, you got the idea, I guess. What do we got here? We got, uh, you can see this is still too wet to mess with over here. It was a good idea that I, I pushed those, uh, uh, I did those corners. Because now the rocks, you see over here, there must have been a rock or something and it pulled up. So you go back the other way, you know, let's push it down and let's try to make it nice. And what happens is after this sets up a little bit more, I'm um, going to take this flat trowel where all over there and just go over it. Or you can take a little piece of wood and it bring up that little bit of, uh, what do they call it? I don't know, a little bit of water you bring to the top and the, the stones are down. So then, um, and then it's already been smoothed and everything. So you're good to go there. So then what do you do? You, you take a, a, a broom and you just, Put some light brush marks on a, on the surface so then it's a done deal what do they call it they call it a broom sweep finish so but you know and then people they talk about how much they can do in a day well i don't know i mean and i could be wrong because once again i'm no mason but i think if you keep your wet edge going i mean if I was doing all this and had the capability of getting it all done in one day, um, the wet edge would still be down here and we'd still be okay. I got a little problem there because that board I have is a little bit high. That red board. You know, it's not a perfect science here. And I'm sure, like I say, other people could do a better job but I'm just trying to get it by for as little bit of money as possible and get a decent job. So, well anyway, you can see that this is not quite as good as I'd like it to be. That's the problem. I'm off the form. Would have been better if that red 4x4 wasn't so high. But you know, if you ideally you'd have stakes and they'd be below your forms and you'd have 2x6 forms instead of freaking 3 quarter inch uh, scrap wood. But you know, hey, the street quarter of scrap wood was free. And all in all, I mean, and if you think about it, would it cost a lumber these days? Gosh, if I bought, if I bought two by sixes, enough to do this, it's more than 64 feet, it's 66 feet. Okay, so let's just figure 16 two by sixes. 
I haven't priced, I'll bet there's got to be at least $15 a piece of 2 by 4 today, where I live, is, um, is, uh, over $10. So, figure that out, I mean, holy macros. I mean, I would have spent, gosh darn, I'm not happy over there. I think I got stones or something. That's probably what's going on over here. Maybe I got something messing with me. I should be able to get this. I wish this was a little lower. Oh, well. You can obviously skip through this part if you don't like to watch it. Look at that big stone over here. When I did my first pass, I was on top of that red thing. Maybe that's the way to go, just get on top of it. Because I keep dropping below it. That's what's happening, I keep falling off my form. Well. Sure, no problem there. Yeah, these three quarter boards are tougher to work with if you have to get in a situation like this where you're trying to. That's gonna be good enough. That's gonna be good enough. Probably should have left it before I started to make it better. Okay, well that's it. I'm gonna go and mix another, mix another load, come back and do the same thing, and hopefully be done before too long so here's the sidewalk total of two and a half yards I put in a yard today it was a little tricky over here at this end over here what did I do I I made up a slurry of Portland and uh, and water after I washed it and I uh, liberally applied that prior to putting the concrete in I mean if it breaks and falls off I'll put another piece on but uh, I've got seven hours today to put a yard in. And uh, I put in a yard and a half yesterday and that was a 10 hour day. But uh, I had to put a seam in over here because, uh, you know, it was a little bit, uh, little bit uh, tricky. I mean, I could have probably done a better job, but all in all, I'm pretty pleased with the sidewalk. I think it came out quite well. Um, I just misted this down over here because this was put in yesterday. Uh, here's where it meets the patio. You know, if it's not perfect, hey, you know, what am I going to say here? I mean, this is just a homeowner job for a homeowner sidewalk. Um, I think it came out pretty premium. Quite honestly, if a professional came in and did it, and if I was complaining about anything that might be wrong with this, which I'm not saying there is because I haven't seen anything, well, I guess I got a little oil drip or something on the on the concrete over here. I'm not sure exactly what this stain is. Um, <clears throat> had the catwalk across it yesterday when I was working. Um, tried to fix that, but as far as the grade goes and the purpose, I think it's pretty darn good. So I'm pleased. 
Anyway, thanks for watching.